What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 2 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Grimgore Ironhide campaign. So as we saw last time, we have begun our conquest of the island of Albion, destroying Marcus Wolfhart's faction and by and large destroying Manfred and the Drakenhof Conclave as well. At the very least, his armies are done for and only the Isle of Whites remains and I sincerely doubt that he's going to be able to hold it. In this episode, we're going to do a little bit of sea seeing as there are a few nice islands that we may want to pick up before or turning on either the Jade Court or the Defenders of the Great Plan to the north of us. Our goal is to take Albion, and I do imagine it'll take at least two episodes to do so, but we'll have to see. Really depends on how well defended the, uh, the Lizards are here and how their armies are. We do have Saurus to contend with after all, then they should be a little bit better than our Orc boys. Quite a bit better, I would say. Anyway, uh, before we get started, just like the previous campaigns I've run, we will be doing an engagement threshold sort of thing for the episode length. So if this episode gets 500 likes and 60 comments, the next episode will be an hour long. So do keep that in mind if you're into that sort of thing. And of course, the threshold will be adjusted down once we've hit a few, I don't know, episode milestones. Play it by ear, as I usually slash always do. Anyway, let's get going going we can move you guys around slightly in fact hmm i wonder if we should s transfer the lord and the moon howlers to grimgore i know at the same time you know what we do sh what we should do we should move you here we should move you here so that hopefully you can hit the mud flats in a single bound and then not have grimgore do it for you that would be ideal as Grimgore might not be able to reach this, and in fact probably won't be. Alright, that looks good to me. Let's do the building building, such as it is, and then we'll move next turn. Uh, totem pole, sure, upgrade those. They're relatively cheap to upgrade. We need to get the Raiden stashes up here and the da Hordes, but we can't do the minus two control right now, so I think we'll bypass it. Hmm... I guess that's another boss tent here. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll start building the Gobbo tents. Construction cost reduction, income from all buildings, all adjacent provinces, and research rate. If every single territory here has bonus income, to adj the adjacency bonus should grow to be pretty darn nice. Uh, let's also get more idols here for more growth and adjacency. Got all of those adjacency bonuses. And then in Trogland, I don't think we're going to waste our time getting an upgraded boss's shack, because more likely than not, we'll be deleting it eventually. The rest of the stuff, I think, too expensive for our time right now. And I believe we're good, so let's end the turn and let's proceed. Spite Blood Reaper, let's find out if you can reach where you're supposed to reach. And let's hope that the Drakenhof Conclave can't recover, though I sincerely doubt that they will again. They have to have spent a lot of money on raising all those dead to get that uh, new army up and running after all. All right, and the moment of truth. Can you, sir, reach the mud flats? No, you cannot. And Grimgore, you can't either. Well, darn. All right, that means we're going to pop you into raiding stance right here. I can't believe they're just slightly off. I mean, I can believe it, but it ain't great. Uh, let us then pop you into raiding stance as well. And then let's swap some units around. And we'll send Grimgore to the Isle of Wights. Unfortunate about this turn. Now let's take the Goblin Big Boss and the Moon Howlers for now. Well, actually, do we need the Goblin Big Boss? I would like the Moon Howlers. Uh, let's uh, remove the Goblin Archers. Ask ah, her to take the Goblin Big, Big Boss. We'll level him up. It doesn't mean necessarily that we'll keep him in the army, but the levels, if nothing else, uh, may be worth our time. We'll replace him with another Black Orc Big Boss as soon as we have capacity. And while he's here, he can get Scavenge. Nice. And, oh, <laughs> he would have been able to scavenge more if he had been in that other army for the turn, but well, whatever. Whatever. I don't care enough. And Grimgore, you are level 9, so getting there, but not quite. Let's see what we got in terms of buildings. Nothing important right now, though the public order is once again waning. Hmm. 
Okay, uh, we have low fightiness. I guess we'll need to quell the animosity. All right, fine, fine, fine. Get that fightiness back up and running. And skip. At least they're waiting to give us a little bit of extra cash. And hey, it's not necessarily a bad thing to advance a few turns in the early game. It should make later fights a little bit more difficult as this gives the AI an opportunity to actually tech up into better units. Ideally, the type of units that won't be easily defeated by a pile of work boys, and will take something a little bit uh, stronger. Anyway, you switch to Wah Begins, please, and in fact, Grimgore temporarily switched to Wah Begins. You are going to strike here, Mr. Spite Blood Reaper, and this should be auto-resolvable. And a tiny bit of damage and a tiny bit of cash. We'll reoccupy the place and got ourselves a free Paris Stone. And there's that Helm of Discord we've been wanting. Lovely. And I will immediately put you on, I guess, Grimgore, because there's no other armor. And the Power Stone can't go to any of you. Hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, Spite, you can sit here for now. And Grimgore, your fightiness is looking okay. Let's pop you into... I take it Raiding Stance. Yeah, let's pop you into Raiding Stance. And then move you here. And you're back. Are you actually able to cross? You are able to cross. But still can't quite reach the place. But that's okay. Alrighty, we'll need you to possibly defend some territories. Are these guys still at war? Indeed they are. The second they start being at war, they might attack us. So we need to pay attention. Uh, mud flats. I don't think we need that there, as in the military building. We will, however, build yet another one of these idols, because we build them everywhere. We'll immediately upgrade the mud flats to the next tier. I did want to get some trolls, at least a couple of them, but in fact... We may want to just bypass the regular trolls and get a couple of the uh, stone trolls instead to act as our main line. Well, not a, really our main line, but, uh, you yeah, know. Uh... I think we'll hold off on it for a bit. We gotta build up our economy a little bit first. Speaking of, let's get that Raiden stashes here. Uh, we could upgrade the boss pole, but I don't think there's any need to do so right now. And then we can upgrade the totem pole. Mm, beautiful. The extra growth is really necessary for green skins because of the uh, and the fact that their buildings, or at least a lot of their buildings, require it. Anyway, skip the rest of this, uh, minus the commandment available, which should most definitely be in camp ruckus, regardless of the income cost. And then we'll end the turn. We'll take out the Isle of Whites, and then we'll move seaward. Ah, getting 699 rating for this, not bad. And not bad at all, Grimgore. I'm a little bit impressed. I'm still not going to build him to be a raider, but uh, it's still something to consider, potentially. At times. And, alright, we're not getting attacked. Are these guys still fighting? Oh, I see there is Captain Sisko out there. Oh, hopefully you don't start gathering these islands. Hmm, I guess we'll see. Would be annoying. Uh, Grimgore, Wa begins to you, sir. We should probably leech some XP with the uh, with the second lord as well. And, oh, here a victory. Hmm, you know what? That is a massive pile of Graveguard compared to the Orc Boys we have. This might actually be worth fighting. All right, well, let's give the Lichbone Pennant to, let's say, the Boar Boys. And just because. And we'll move the second lord in to leech the XP. Because why not? Uh... Yeah, March Dance. March Dance right here. He's going to suffer a little bit of attrition, but it's fine. Like so, and then we're going to fight this one. Uh, if we're going to fight it, we will want to level up, so you, sir, can have Inspiring Presence. We're probably not going to actually keep him as a lord, but he's the cheapest one there is right now, so... For now. Uh, Scram, our first Black Orc Big Boss... You, sir, at rank 14, get some nice buffs, but I don't think we're going to hold on to your points. I'd rather get smash him faster to get that area melee attack buff. Even though we already have plenty of sources of those, we, uh, well, we want as many of them as we can manage. Edbutt or Brain Bursta? Uh, does Brain Bursta do armor piercing? Eh, some. What about Edbutt? Edbutt does no armor piercing damage, so not going to be as useful against the Grave Guard. Or we just tech straight towards Foot of Gork, and here we go. Or we just tech towards Scouting. 
Scouting is nice as well. How much mana do we have? We still have plenty. Nah, I think we're gonna go for evasion and get this stuff. We'll get scouting eventually. And what we need to be able to cast. Let's get Life Leeching on you for when you cast Spirit Leech, though I do like Soul Blight. We'll get it next. And then lastly, the Goblin Big Boss. I mean, we could get your Bloody Blade. Hmm. Yeah, fine, let's get your Bloody Blade. I was wondering whether we should actually not level yet, but I think we're okay. And Grimgore, attack. Let's see how those Graveguard fare. They should be a lot stronger than the zombies and skellies we faced off against last time. Alrighty, here we go. I'm obviously not sure whether we're going to keep this many heroes in this army. I was hoping the Black Orc big bosses would uh, level up Black Orcs or buff up Black Orcs, but uh, well, whatever, we'll see. We don't technically need the Giant River Troll Hag, but there are, they are quite useful uh, for Soul Blight and for the occasional Spirit Leech. Not that the, the uh, Orc Shaman isn't useful as well. But anyway, battle begins. We're going to annoy the enemy and the orcs will watch and cheer as the 12 full units of enemy graveguard slowly begin to make their way towards us. It's not a bad army, you got to admit. They've got Crypt Horrors and Vargeists, as I said, 12 units of graveguard, uh, 8 of which, I believe, are of the great weapon variety. A black coach that we will really have to watch out for, as black coaches, ever since their buffs got pretty nasty, and they're even nasty here in SFO. So, yeah, we'll have to send our heroes to go after them. Or go after it, I guess. Anyway, we're going to start annoying the enemy or continue annoying the enemy with those Doom Divers, but we've already seen them smash their way into the ground. So I'm just going to speed it up while the enemy army gets annoyed and marches their way towards us one last time. Like the Horn of Helm Hammerhand in some ways. Anyway, and away we go. Looks like the enemies are moving in and the Bats and the Vargeists will, as usual, lead the Vanguard going over the line of war and smashing into the line of goblins, or at the very least the bats, smashing into the line of goblins, whereas the Vargeists foolishly again go after the... Uh the Black Orcs, and I'm wondering why they did that again, because it happened the last time we fought them. Why are they trying to go after the Black Orcs who surround and destroy them every time? It's quite curious. But anyway, uh, just curious AI things. It looks like the Black Coach is wanting to get in here as well to also go after the Black Orcs, but that also does not seem like a particularly good matchup. We'll trap the Black Coach with a pile of uh, boys together with the... Uh, uh, together with the Black Orcs, and the Black Orc Big Boss will wail away at it until it gets destroyed. In fact, it is already at half HP, and the Vargeists are melting away and down to one. And very nice. Away goes the Vargeist and tries to rush through the pile of uh, boys. It looks like it went to the aid, or at least tried to go to the aid of its lord, but its lord drops beneath it uh, just as Grimgore knocks the Vargeist away as well. Fantastic. And in the meantime, it looks like the enemy Crypt Horrors are doing some decent damage. 20 kills to their name and about half HP on the unit of Orc Boys in front of the line. Fortunately, our giant river troll hag together with all of our other heroes, other than Grimgore, of course, who's hunting, um, well, things, but I guess the vampire are enemy right now. All of our heroes are going to go after the enemy Crypt Horrors, and we'll hope to bring them down. Otherwise, it's a good old-fashioned melee as the Great Sword Grave Guard face off against piles of boys, though now the boys have that Grimgore's Big Wah active, putting their weapon strength up to 66 and greater than that of the Great Weapon Wielders. Certainly nice to see. And these are regular orc boys, not even savage orcs or, uh, or biggins or anything like that, so that's pretty darn impressive. All right. A lots and lots of Graveguard to work our way through, though. I mean, damn. And they're also fairly heavily armored at 90 armor. And our armor piercing is, let's say, 
a relatively lackluster at only 14, so it is going to take time to work our way through them. And that's why we're gonna... I wish I hadn't missed that charge, but, uh, well, you know, we're gonna charge them in the back a few times, and hopefully that'll force them to melt away. The Moon Howlers charge them once, and then the Orc Boar Boy Biggins are getting ready to charge again. It also looks like Grimgore has finished off the enemy vampire, and the Crypt Horrors have melted away. And here come the Boar Boys. Alright, now it's just a matter to kill the blobs of enemy Graveguard. Then, since they're gonna get surrounded, they're gonna be in very bad shape. Regardless of the fact that they have all that armor. Now, you gotta love the lighting in this particular battle. Definitely one of my favorite types of lighting that you get occasionally. And though it looks like we won't be seeing it for too much longer, as the enemy piles of Graveguard are most certainly in trouble. And now... We had a little uh, mini fight over on this uh, flank in the woods as well. The bounce power shifts fully in our favor. The grave guard and begin to melt away. Uh, the orc war boss are riding through their ranks, uncaring of the great weapons swinging. Besides, we have much greater weapons in the form of those big old axes on the. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, a nice, uh, nice hit to that uh, particular grave guard. <laughs> Ow, my back. <laughs> uh, and also, it looked like he uh, swung right at the screen there. Scared me for a second. Very nice. Uh, very nice. A decisive victory over this particular army, and indeed over Manfred's faction. Alrighty, very nice. It looks like our front line got quite dented by those Graveguard, unsurprisingly, considering the troop quality and disparity, and uh, this is a good indicator for what we shall see against the uh, full source stacks from the uh, Defenders of the Great Plan, so excited to get to them. And we're going to occupy the place, obviously, though sacking it is tempting. This is a province that we are looking to keep. We did get a Sword of Shielding and a Talisman of Endurance for Grimgore, and lots and lots of Goblin Rantas, eh? All right. And, yeah, that was for a mission of controlling three provinces, and there goes and the Drakenhop Conclave. You are not going to suffer attrition, because it looks like the vampire corruption has dropped sufficiently. Grimgore is still not at rank 12, but he's certainly close to it, so almost there. That'll also give us the ability to unlock the Dirkit Squigs, although not necessarily in this army. I will... Uh, I'll consider it, let's say. Anyway, Grimgore, let's lose that garbage dragon bane gem and give you the Talisman of Endurance. Uh, we can keep the Shrieking Blade on this guy, but... Um, I don't want to get rid of the Power Stone because it can still be useful, so... Pearl of Shielding will wait. I was going to turn it into something else, but uh, whatever. And I guess in theory we could give the Bad Moon Banner to you, but if you die with the garbage little army you have... That ain't gonna be great. Also, let's see, we... Can we build here? Beast layers. Um, upkeep reduction for boar, wolf, and spider rider units. And what do we have here? We have a spider rider thing. With goblin wolf chariots. Hmm, it might be worth our time to build a couple of them. Damn, we... We'll have to, I guess, delete a couple of these units because... Ah, I'd rather transfer them. But then Grimgore won't be able to move. Hmm... They're really cheap to build, though, so we could just re-delete them. And what do we build here? We got Orc Biggins as well, already available. Man, this was a nice pickup, I gotta say. I mean, I guess we'll build the Beast Layers anyway, even though we don't technically have any Wolf or Spider Rider units, but we will. We'll have an all-Spider army and an all-Boar Boy army. In fact, I believe the two legendary Orcs that we will uh, acquire... Spider units and a boar boy units. Yeah, the two legendary war bosses that we will acquire are for spiders and boars. So I guess it's good that we have some of that here. Hmm. All righty, we'll replace the two goblin archers. Sorry, goblin archers, though we did recruit you uh, with a couple of... Oh, that was dumb. I didn't realize that they would take two turns to recruit. Nah, whatever, we'll take more goblins from this guy, and then we'll have him sit here and recruit them. 
Yeah, I keep forgetting that we start in an area where there's a lot of yellow climates rather than the uh, green climates. A bit of a shame, but not a big deal. Anyway, I believe we're good to go for next turn. No, we can actually build some stuff. Ah, uh, yes, immediate green skin dock upgrade. We'll hold off on the boss pole. Slanashi giggle. Uh, Gabo tunnels, I'm going to say yes to you. We'll want to upgrade you and get as many of you as possible. And then we'll want to get the Raiden stashes here. Raiden stashes and Gobbo tunnels. Gotta be pretty much everywhere. Alright, the rest of this is good. We should, in theory, upgrade the Savage Orc camp, but we can wait on that for a little bit. And I guess at the Mudflats we can build another set of Gobbo tents. Although I'm inclined to once again make this a full military uh, sort of uh, settlement. We'll see. Uh, let's go for the camp ruckus here. Let's collect income. It's not much, but we need it. And we're ready to go next turn. So skip, 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 and go. Let's also hope that the enemy doesn't immediately declare war on us and gives us a chance to move through a few of those islands. It would be quite the boon early game. But also, I don't want that uh, rogue army to steal all of our islands. They're a nice, neat row for us as well. All right, so income from post-battle loot and attrition from casualties. Where did that rogue army go? Okay, I don't see it anymore. Good. Uh, Grimgore, I want you to go into March Stance. You are a little bit hurt still, but that's life. Then I want you to move out apparently this way. All right, go here. Then I will transfer to you those two goblin archers that... Uh, you know what? Transfer the goblins. Transferring too many between armies can And the reason I want to transfer the, those guys is because we'll delete them. Because they'll be useless. Frankly, we're going to delete these guys too, but a little bit later. Uh, you could start building a couple of Orc Biggins for Grimgore while he does his thing in the sea. I mean, we should have gone this way instead. Probably should have gone this way. We can still go this way, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm, I'd rather not risk it. He might not be able to actually go out into the sea then and proceed further proceed further and you couple of biggins and a couple of chariots mostly because i want them to chase i guess we could get the forest goblin spider riders to harass enemies and apply poison they're probably going to be the better unit and we can certainly annoy the enemy quite a bit with the goblin wolf chariots though but i do like the poison application hmm Gonna have to go with the poison. All right. And you are gonna have to sit here, bud. And uh, let's see what we got in terms of buildings. Ooh, we're dropping in terms of public order again. Minus five here in particular. And we'll have to fix that with a uh, boss's tent. And then we can build nothing here. Or at least we can, but I don't want to invest in the uh, boss's pole over the uh, regular totem pole. Good. And new technologies available. Wolf Breeden gets us Wolf Rider upgrades. Meh. And then the same thing, I think, for the Spider Riders. Casual Healy Mushrooms. Yes, that's what we want. That is most definitely what we want. And then probably through to less eaten, more building. All of this probably very much useful when we get to it. Skip, 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 and turn. Faction encounter, Hag Grief. Ooh, why did they get encountered? They might have taken a territory then. Big if true. That must mean they are either fighting Yuan Bo or fighting the last defender, or not the last defenders, the uh, defenders of the Great Plan. All very defendy. All right, how are we looking up here? These guys are still at war with each other, and aha, Yuan Bo is also at war with the uh, with the Dark Elves, and oh, the Dark Elves are at war with everybody. Yeah, well, let them keep doing their thing. Yeah, funnily enough, Malice likes us, but I don't think we're going to let them live. And there's too much valuable territory for us up here. Uh, Grimgore, grab this real quick for uh, easy auto-resolve. Sail to the wreck. And auto-resolve it. There's no need to fight this. If we get one of the bigger ones, we'll fight the... Uh, We'll fight the coast, but not like this. Uh, ransom captives, eat captives, slaughter captives. Hmm. Tempted to slaughter them. I mean, the healing is fine, but the control right now is an issue. Slaughter the captives. Does slaughter the captives give us bonus fightiness? Hmm. Battle 1, foreign soil animosity casualties. 
Apparently not, but we did get another Lichbone Pennant and some lost cargo, even more growth for provinces. Can't say no to that. Grimgor, there's another island on your way, and it's this mysterious island, which means you can still grab it while in March Dance. And we'll have to have Spite Blood Reaper follow you. Alright, what do we have in terms of buildings? We do want the Gabo Tunnel zipped. So up them we shall. Mm, everything else looks okay. Ah, you need a raiding pit. Raiding stash. Pit stash, whatever. And I believe that's all. That's it, that's all, that's it, that's all. Or at least that's it, that's all in terms of what I want to spend on you. Ah, uh, you can get a raiding stash. And you, ohm stones are way too expensive. Though I'd like, like to get a couple of those savage giants in there. And we'll give it a bit. Grimgore, did that level you up incidentally? No, but the next one is liable to do so, so let's end turn. Move through the islands, and we'll probably land in lizard territory. Or maybe we'll land here, we'll see. It really depends on what the enemy factions are going to look like after we've landed. It might also be beneficial to start on Yuan Bo, since he's a little bit closer to our territory. But we'll see. He might lose all his territory by the time we're done with the islands. Alright, control plus two for Spite, great for Spite, Grimgore, head out to Island. You have two more turns of recruitment before you give this stuff to Grimmy. Go for shiny boots and fresh recruits, press scan to casualty or punishment rate. Yeah, that works, and <laughs> another power stone, but no experience, unfortunately. Alright, go here to the coast of Albion, head to the shipwreck, and then head to this, and then we possibly will land at Bleakmoor. Oh, these two pieced out with each other. Wait, wait, wait. Hmm. If they pieced out with each other... I'm still not sure who we're gonna attack, but... Well, I am sure that we're gonna keep building, because we gotta... Let's get another one of those raiding stashes up in here. And... We are good here. Looking okay. And... No, no. Oh, oh, oh stone, stop looking at me. Uh, quick deal. Defenders of the Great Plan want to ally. No, they'll get destroyed by Hag Grief. Nice. I do notice that Hag Grief is stronger than they are. Hmm. Maybe if we could declare war and then force Yuan Bo to fight them? He does still have an army out there somewhere. Hmm. Well, we'll see. I still want those islands, and I'm damn well gonna have Grimgore pick them up. The fact that they're in a nice little line like this, man, I would have killed for a line of islands like this in the early game for the Vampire Coast. The bonuses for that would have been pretty insane. 35,000 out of 5 islands, and that's without the results of the islands as well. That's just the bonuses. Alright, you can get very, very close to this one, so you'll go there. How are we doing? I'm still double checking these guys. Don't you all peace out with each other, though. Alright, I guess we'll grab this one, then we'll land it. Oh, I didn't see this one. Huh. Man. Well, still gonna take the time. This is growing our provinces, and frankly, it's uh, to our advantage. You, sir, are going to march stance, and you're gonna try to get to Grimgore, head him off to transfer stuff. If we had more capacity, I would build more uh, embiggens, but alas, we do not right now. All right, what do we have in terms of stuff that we can build? Mm, nothing important here. I oh, maybe I should have built some trolls, but... Mm. We don't make enough money right now for it to be worth our time. Uh, you should probably lose one of these things. Do we lose the fighting pit? Because we were going to build one here in Trogland. Yeah, we'll build it in Trogland because we need it for the Black Orcs anyway. So we'll lose it here. Oh, although, wait, wait, wait. You will increase Biggin's capacity by two. Wait, 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 wait. Tier three. Oh, nah, that won't help, will it? Well, actually, it'll enable us to build two more. All right, fine. I'll wait to destroy that to get two more Biggin's. Or we could just ignore the biggins and then tech straight towards Black Orcs. Not sure. And we shall see. Anyway, Grimgore, continue. Get a couple more quick out of resolves. Looks like the defenders of the Great Plan aren't too fond of us, but hardly surprising. 
Oh, and it looks like Yuendo has reclaimed one of the territories lost to the defenders. Interesting. It looks like the lizards are on the back foot, which makes sense with Nakai having been destroyed. Uh, and Grimgore grab. And explore the island. Quick little auto resolve again. A little bit of damage, and we will take the... And our control again. I'm tempted to go for the growth and the replenishment. Yeah, I'd go for the growth and the replenishment this time. How's the fightiness looking, by the way? And did that level up to 12? Yes, indeed it did. Fantastic. Alrighty, so first of all... Ooh, what do we have here? Do other warlords are repress... Impressed, not repressed, unfortunately. Uh, upkeep reduction for lords and heroes, 10%. Probably will have a fair few of them. Control plus four in own provinces where an army's present now, it's useless. And melee attack and defense all characters, faction-wide. That's not a horrible buff. And neither is Lord Recruit rank plus four, though. And neither is upkeep reduction for lords and heroes, damn it. Hmm. I'm... I mean... Upkeep is nice, but the way I figure it, this won't be very useful in the late game because we'll have infinite money in the late game. Oh wow, look at all those regiments of renown unlocked. Uh, this will not be useful in the late game. This will be useful at all times. And this will be useful at all times, late and early game. I'm still gonna have to go for the more powerful units. I just like to see those big numbers go up, so T for Gorg. Alrighty. And Mogrub's Mangy Marauders, Jerkit Squigs, and Logie Bogies Spore Splotas are ready to go. 8,000 gold. Very nice. That should, in fact, fund something. Uh, Mysterious Island, pick that up. Coast of Albion shared. Keep moving towards this shipwreck. And maybe Mushroom Stew this time. And we got a Banner of Swiftness and the Curse of Cannibalism, a Regeneration. Lovely. Alright, move here. And Grimgore, it's time. Best of the best. Plus two Black Orc Big Boss capacity. We'll get another one in your army. Uh, who won't have that upkeep reduction. And then we have the passive ability, best of the best. If an enemy lord or hero presences in ability range, you get a bunch of bonuses. Black Orc Wrecking Ball. Great, but with only one Black Orc unit available right now, it's something crazy. This levels up all biggins, which we also don't really have in the army, but we will shortly. Leadership reduction for enemy lords and embedded heroes. And then lastly... Ah, game, please. And lastly, ooh... Basically makes Grimgore much more difficult to deal with, but... Mm, I'm gonna say go for Imposing Presence for the leadership reduction, bigger and harder, because we have one war boy and we're about to have some biggins, and then we'll get from the front. Control plus two, own local province, frenzy for Grimgore, causes fear, f removes fear from all enemies, that's actually quite useful, and a little bit of extra speed for him, though he's never gonna be fast. That's enough for our purposes. All right, and we'll level the rest up before we fight once we grab that island. I did not expect this to be as administrative-y as it turned out to be this episode, I mean, but not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it doesn't cost that much to upgrade you to Tier 4. I'm just wondering whether we should upgrade the Gabo Towns to Tier 3 instead. Yeah, I think we will. Gabo Town and I guess Ohm Stones as well. And Gabo Town will leave you for now. Although, maybe it's time to start upgrading those. You know what? Start upgrading those everywhere. I changed my mind. Upgrade you. Oh, actually, no. We'll upgrade you next turn because we want to get the Ohm Stones to tier 5 as fast as possible. And speaking of Ohm Stones, get you up and running. Control. Wait. Plus 10. Oh, very nice. All right. Uh, that one will be worth our time, and how close do we need to be? In fact, you at the Great Ohm sit right... Wait, if Grimgore is going to land here, you can sit right here and still recruit two more Orc Biggins for him. In two turns, granted, but, you know, that's fine. Don't do anything. In fact, wait, sit in a settlement because you have an income or upkeep reduction for doing so. There we go. Much, much better. Double checking the war status of everybody, still roughly the same. Like these two to continue fighting, but they're not. Skip, 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 and turn. 
and it's almost time to land. I'm not going to go for the island that's over on this side, just want this one that's in the way. Yeah, I think we want to start with the lizards. The reason is the... Now the J Dragon could move southward and attack us, and ah, another quest available. Ah, and they're in the same place. Neat. We will do this when we really need the public order bonus, though, which I'm sure we will. Uh, Grimgore, head out to the shipwreck. Watch out for Captain Sissico, I guess. All right, and explore the island and get one more quick little auto resolve. Ooh, who do we give the banner of swiftness perfect vigor to? Probably Grimgore. He'll get his own perfect vigor later on, but not now. Auto resolve. And we don't need to replenish. 11. Eh, it's not that much. Gonna have to go with control again, I think. It's really tempting between the control and the growth. But we gotta keep the control okay E. That's a word. Control. Alright. Now, Grimgore. Warbore materials at sea. Oh my. Uh, I really wish I hadn't upgraded that this turn. <laughs> oh man, this would have been really nice in the late game. But oh well. Grimgore, turn around and move here. Everything that's expensive needs to be built now, which means we want to try to get to the tier 4 forts. We also now want to build the Savage Orc camp. Absolutely. Build the boss poles everywhere. And anything and everything. Boss pool here. Boss pool. Wait. Mm, maybe if we ignore the boss pool, we'll be able to upgrade you before the materials at sea ends. Let's, let's assume that we will. Great Ohm. We'll upgrade you, however. And then we'll upgrade you afterwards. Yeah, this, this one is probably not going to get to that tier 4, but what can you do? What can you do indeed? Oh, wait. If you move to Great Hogs, I have an idea. Look to Great Hogs, you might actually be able to build some trolls afterwards. Alright, and skip, 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 and end the turn. Another good thing about doing a little bit of admin in the early game like this is that we'll be able to tech towards more different troops faster, rather than winning half the game with basic troops. I have a bad tendency to do that, sort of suffering from success sort of thing. And it's more fun to use fancy troops with a lot of extra stuff, even if it ain't efficient, let's say. Anyway, Grimgore, you cannot reach the Bleakmoor right now, so you're gonna land, and then you'll head there next turn. I imagine there isn't much in the way of defenders? Yeah, no. We'll hit that, we'll hit Conquata, we'll see what do you do, sir. Oh, if this army takes the Bleakmoor... Mm. Okay, well, we'll see what happens. Uh, either way, we're going to wait for Newland to upgrade it to the next tier. We are going to ignore the boss's shack. Let's see about the other upgrades. You, while you're cheap, Hag Hut, please. And then many burrows. Great Ohm has just been upgraded, which means we are free to upgrade the boss pole. You, sir, are going to go into no stance. So you're going to move in here, and then you're going to grab us two more orc biggins for Grimgore. And I guess we could build him some regular trolls. They're going to get replaced by the other trolls, but for now... Oh, he can get them. Ah, uh, Our income's going to get screwed by this. Hmm. I could also build some Savage Orcs, but we could just also wait until Savage Orc Biggins are online. Or Bone Clubbers. Hey, you know what? I'm going to wait on the trolls. It's a little bit too expensive for what it's uh, going to give us right now. In turn... And let's hit the bleak more. Time to get some battles underway. We've only had one so far this episode. Are you kidding me? Are you really going to siege that? You little. Ah. And now that race out. Oh, no, you're not going to siege that. Well, I guess we're attacking you now because you're in the way. Uh, hmm. I wonder if we can force you on boat to fight you. And funnily enough, oh no, unhappy populace minus five control. That's going to be bad. We have terrible control right now, anyway. We might have to do Grimgore's quest just to counteract this, but yes, I obey. And upgrade any settlement to level five. Working on it. How many territories do you have, sir? Four. 
Yeah, well, you're going to have none shortly, but we need to deal with you now. Uh, you're going to continue recruiting. Once we transfer these units to Grimgore, then we'll do one of his quests to counterbalance the massive public order loss that we're suffering right now. And we can't afford to cancel recruitment, or not recruitment, uh, cancel uh, public order income taxation thing, you know. Not much of a choice in the matter. Also, I don't see anything else that we can build. Also, how's that Ohmstone looking? I'd like to get the one giant in Grimgore's army as well. Man, maybe we should make this guy a recruiter. He's a braga. We could... Oh. There is nothing in the early portion of his tree that reduces recruitment costs. Huh. Interesting. I guess we have to do that via buildings instead. Alrighty, well, Grimgore, you're gonna switch to, uh, begins, and you're going to attack uh, this guy. We will briefly talk to the defenders, say we will join your war. Man, if only they owned this. Gotta let them keep that for access to their units. We'll join war against Hag Grief, and we will take as much money as you can give us. Like so. Alright. And then we'll destroy them, and then we'll destroy you, etc. Uh, take the Bleak Moor, should be an easy little auto resolve. And a not too bad amount of money, Occupy. Alright, there you go, Grimgore. And we may have to move through to Lost Erickson's Landing, it's hard to say, depending on what's going on up here. But we shall see. Anyway, with that done, I do believe we're ready to end the turn. There's nothing to build, and there's no way this thing... At least I really doubt it goes up to tier 4. You will. So we can't build anything there. Eh, I'll see. Uh, repair this and let's build the green skin camp while you're at it. And skip, skip, skip. Who has low fightiness? It's not Grimgore, but it will be Grimgore shortly. I guess we'll just do that while recruiting. I don't imagine that it interferes with recruiting. Or at least I hope it doesn't. We're about to find out. Also, hopefully Malice doesn't start moving southward. Let's uh, talk to Yuan, though, and see if he's willing to fight him. Considering they just peaced out, I think it's not possible, as in the AI will really not want to due to that 10-turn cooldown. Unless the 10-turn cooldown is only for the player. I have no idea. Not something I've ever bothered to look into. Hey, casualty replenishment upgrade. Very nice. Uh, My blood not to you, Jade Court. I Join our war. Against Hagrief. No, you won't do that. You persist. What if we join your war against the defenders? No, you won't do that either. The defenders are too weak, unfortunately. Alright, well, I'm not going to bother dealing with the defenders. We're going to... Mm, I was about to say March Stance, but it might be too risky. If Malice has a full stack nearby. On the other hand, is his stack powerful enough to defeat us? Somehow I have my doubts. Move. Move in March Stance. Ah, never mind, there he is. I was wrong. I was very, very long. Ambush stance. Move into their territory. We'll see if he attacks this. If he does, we'll kill him. Hopefully. If he doesn't, well, then we'll have wasted some time. Uh, which will be a shame, but it is what it is. Ooh. We have nasty skulkers available. Very useful in the early game. Savage orc boar boys as well. We should try to upgrade the uh, Savage Orc camp to the next level while we still have materials at sea and just get those Savage Orc boar boy biggins and the Bone Club a tribe Savage Orcs. Yeah, we're, get, we're getting both of those. Very nice. Uh, anything else that we need to build? Next turn for Newland to be upgraded. Yeah, early game materials at sea. Go figure. I don't think I've ever had that happen in the early game before, but I am quite happy about it. I want to double check what the debuffs are for control faction wide from low control minus one. Ouch. Yeah, for low general speaking public order. Let's also get ourselves uh, point to your rocks. No spider worship wolf breeding. No, I think we have to go to Gabo crackdown to get the uh, speed for infantry, leadership and weapon strength for work infantry. And probably big and bullies. And oh, no, we should get the construction cost first. Even more construction cost reduction. Though this has spoiled me already. End the turn, Grimgore. Let's hope that Malice attacks and screws himself. Please don't sack at Malice. Ow! Okay, I was not expecting that. Our ambush failed. 
And Malice decided to attack us. Eh. Go figure. Interesting. I did not upgrade our units, or at least I didn't uh, give them their level buffs. But oh uh, well. Pyrrhic victory casualties high. Let's see if that is truly the case. Away we go. Alrighty, here we go. Malice Darkblade and his army. Malice himself is a force to be reckoned with, especially in that Sarkan form. And, of course, the army that he has brought is quite a bit more elite than ours. A ton of Tier 3 units in there. A Medusa, a couple of Cold One Knights, a couple of Doomfire Warlocks. Certainly a big troop disparity compared to the uh, ones that we're using. Some Scourge Runners chariots in there as well so we'll see just how well we can fare it's going to take some time to bring down troops that are better than ours with uh, just orc boys but uh, we do have quite a few more heroes than the enemy so hopefully we can make good use of them anyway the doom bolts start to come down from those enemy doomfire warlocks smacking into two of our units of boys whereas our war boss not war boss black orc Big Boss tries to chase after those Scourge Runner chariots. In lieu of catching them, he goes for the Doomfire Warlocks and gets surrounded by Harpies. And he's going to try to work on those. I was hoping to distract the Doomfire Warlocks long enough to uh, smash into them with our Boar Boys, but it looks like the Doomfire Warlocks charged uh, the pile of uh, Gabas. And thus the Boar Boys are going to destroy them either way. Especially with a few regular boys units to help them out. There we go. These Doomfire Warlocks are very much trapped and they don't have the mass to escape the uh, Boar Boys easily. So they're done for. Alright, uh, I'm going to send the Moon Howlers to help out a little bit and destroy those Harpies, which looks to be reasonably successful as Malice and Grimgore and begin their duel. What's Oh my lord, Malice's stats are way better than Grimgore's right now. 1.2k weapon strength at 80 melee attack, 52 defense, despite the Helm of Discord up on him. Uh, that ain't great. And that ain't great. Just gotta be real careful here. Alright, Grimgore pops that Grimgore's big wah, however, putting his own weapon strength up to 1.2k and his melee attack up to 130, but Malice transforms into Tsarkan and starts dishing out the damage. Grimgore quickly dropping to about a third of his HP and being forced to back up. Tsarkan power up is way, way too much. We're going to send the Black Orcs to head Malice slash Tsarkan off as well as those Cold One Knights who appear to be cycle-charging, while Grimgore recovers and tries to help him with the rest of the fight. Alright, looking like a pretty good fight so far. Looks like we finally managed to catch those Scourge Runner chariots over in the center with the uh, River Troll Hag and the other heroes wailing away, and hopefully uh, that Scourge Runner to be done for soon, and Grimgore going to move towards the pile of units so that he doesn't... Uh, he doesn't get killed by Tsarkan. Otherwise, it looks like the enemy murderous prowess is active. We have managed to force a lot of their infantry to rout, although the Cold One Knights are very much still alive and barely hurt at that, despite the kills they've racked up and the damage they've dealt. So good for them. Mounts of power is about 70% in our favor, and we still have a few more units to kill. Out here, the regular boys have engaged the enemy Dark Shards and have stopped them from firing, while the enemy Medusa is currently in a fight with the uh, Black Orc Big Boss and a pile of random infantry units, as in both Gabos and Orcos. Alrighty, let's see if we can't uh, keep this Medusa here. She should shatter any second now. I don't know whether we have the mass to actually keep her here and uh, neither shatter her or destroy her, but we'll see. 
Either way, she seems to be racking up a decent amount of kills. 82 and 17k damage. That's pretty darn impressive. Like I said, 13 or tier 3 units versus our tier 1s and 2s. Pretty big disparity. Although we do have the Orc Boar Boys at tier 3 and the uh, and Black Orcs, which I think are tier 4. Yeah, they're tier 4, so two good uh, high tier units. Although the enemy does have malice. Anyway, the Black Orcs are facing off against the enemy Cold One Knights, though they are doing so in the darkness, so I'm just not going to watch that. As it's too difficult to see anything. The River Troll Hag trying to smack Malice slash Zarkan around, who pops his abilities and absolutely decimates that unit of Orc Boys. In fact, completely destroys the unit with that. Damn. Bloodstorm, quite effective when it gets going. Anyway, we're gonna hope we can do a little bit more damage with the River Troll Hag and the Orc Shaman. But the other option would have been to basically allow Malice to sort of lose HP over time. And the problem is he's fast enough to have actually caught up to a decent amount of our units. I'm certainly willing to sacrifice a few more um, boys to the um, killing of Malice. Let's see what's going on back here. Still fighting those Cold One Knights who have managed to rout another unit of Orc Boys, though the Black Orcs at least are fine, and now Grimgore is slowly working his way through the Knights. All right. Oh, we need to get him Gitsnik and his Bloodforged Armor so that he can take on uh, scary combatants like Malice. Although I fear that if we are successful at destroying Malice's force here, his faction may not be well enough to recover to fight Grimgor again. We'll see. As I recall, he does have a pretty nice defeat trait as well, but I can't for the love of me remember what it is. It's something to do with damage, but... Eh. Anyway, uh, Malice continues fighting in the center of all these boys. We're getting periodic cast of Spirit Leech on him with that River Troll Hag, and certainly another reason to potentially keep the uh, River Troll Hag in the army. And the rest of Malice's army is, however, pretty much done for. 90% balance of power in our favor, and even the Cold One Knights have booked it on out of there. Fairly long battle, but it looks like finally Malice is uh, just about to go down. Are running into the Black Orcs, and I do believe Grimgore is back in it. And one more blow from somebody. Come on. Oh, and he uses one more of that Soul Stealer ability, or whatever it's called. And that drains HP and also is quite damaging. And though fortunately it will not and be enough as he should finally go down. There we go, and Grimgore does get the kill. Just barely so, though, as he went down to about 20% of his HP. Ooh, oh, that certainly took some effort and a well-earned Pyrrhic victory. Well done, Malice. It was quite the showing. He is a tenacious one, isn't he? Ooh, alrighty. Well, that one actually took some effort. Man, is Malice tough. He got 41k damage. I mean, he's one of the uh, tougher lords in the entire game, so hardly surprising, but damn. Still, he basically single-handedly destroyed that orc boy's unit and heavily damaged a bunch of others, and... Pretty much was the only one to damage all of our heroes, so well done to him. Uh, we could take 3k at the cost of fightiness. 3k is quite a bit. The regeneration or the healing, unfortunately, isn't all that much here. Hmm. Mm. I'm really tempted by the 3k despite the fightiness loss. Quite a bit, but nonetheless it tempts me. 3k, go for it. All right, now where's his army gonna run? Ooh, I have to wonder. 
Is it close enough to Conquata that we can get our uh, lizard friends to help us out a little bit here? To join the battle and destroy them without us having to do much? Too bad we won't heal here. I guess I should have ambushed right here instead, but I was thinking if he ran, we'd have to follow, which was a little bit of a problem. Anyway, Grimgore loses armor but gains armor piercing weapon damage, which will be compounded by his additional weapon strength that he gains. He's already at 790, and it'll only grow higher. Obsidian, Trinket, and Dragonbane Gem we will fuse into a sword of anti-heroes and put that on Grimgore immediately to give him magic attacks, whereas the Warrior Bane can, I guess, go on to the Hag to uh, debuff everybody around her. And Oh, you can have the Power Stone as well. Don't care for the scroll of shielding, however. All right, very nice. Let's also pop a level in there. Maybe the hit points was actually needed. We could also go dead art to counteract what we lost. Or you know what? No, let's get hatred. Even more weapon strength. Why the heck not? Uh, three points for you. Not quite to smash him faster, but nearly there. Uh, your weapon strength is surprisingly low. Is it because of the war bore? slightly reduced by virtue of the war bore. Hmm. You probably prefer your speed, though. Surprising. Uh, we probably will want to get battle leader for you to get more melee attack, I would think. But I guess we have to choose one of these first, unless... Nah, I don't care about dodgy geezer. I guess let's go wound maker. Scarred vet ain't too bad, either. Character's aura leadership effect isn't anything crazy. I know, it gets you Scarred Vet instead. It gets you a little bit healthier in case uh, we need it. Here we go in Foot of Gork as well as Magical Reserves. I think we'll go Earthing and pop two points into Here We Go for the area. Wait, is it... Oh, it's area even at level one, meaning we only need one level in it right now. Then Foot of Gork and we'll get Arcane Conduit. I mean, we'll get everything in here, but, you know. Uh, what do we also get? Trolls, Rogue Idols, Wyverns, and Giants get the bonuses from the Shaman. We'll certainly put some of them in this army. Hmm. All right, well, we're going to need to replace the unit that we lost. I guess since we have both of the Gobbo Riders, we'll get the other one. I mean... To be fair, the pump wagons will probably give us more value, but I kind of want them to match, so... We'll do this, and then we'll trade the Gobbos to the Gobbo army afterwards. Grimgore, I would like you to destroy this army in... Wabigin stance? What's the likelihood that we can move past this all the way to Lost Erickson's Landing? It's possible. Which means don't switch stances, just in case you can. Alright, decisive victory, great, auto-resolve this. And I guess eat the captives for a little bit of regen. Yeah, 4%. I'll take it. Eat the captives. And... Yeah, no, you can't reach it. Well, go figure. Uh, go into encamp stands here, raiding camp stands here. Move forward toward Lost Erickson's Landing. We'll grab it, then we'll move all the way to Nagranath. Fast as... Uh, as as we can go. Is the giant thing ready? It is not, but it will be soon. But then again, so will the troll thing, but probably won't be able to afford it. I say we build one giant just for fun to get him in there. And then we'll proceed with uh, getting other trolls and stuff later. All right. And are there buildings to be building? How many more turns do we have materials? Let's see, two. So let's get you green skin fort. And then we'll have one more turn to build up one of these, whichever it may be. Public order is massively dropping right now as well. Don't collect the income here. We're going to need to counteract this. Eh, build the, uh, build a... No, I don't like the... It's not worth it. <laughs> I mean, I guess it does give hero and lord recruit ranks, but it still doesn't feel worth it. I think we'll get uh, public order in some other way. Low fightiness, that's fine. Assigned skill points. We may also want to just make you into an army. So build a few other things, which we probably will. Oh, wait. I was waiting for this thing. Now nah, it's going to take too long to build. We'll get it later. End turn. Let's hit to Lost Erickson's. Should be auto-resolvable and should allow us to heal. Malice wants peace, but frankly, we probably don't want to be dealing with him again. As it just takes way too much effort to knock his, uh, uh, to knock himself out. Though, will he come back by the time we reach the place? We shall see. 
I'm certainly loving the Albion start here. It's been pretty fun so far. And good choice in the voting. And Wa begins. Go to Los Derrickson's landing, please. And I'll resolve it. For obvious reasons, and occupied, because I guess we're holding everything here. A trickster shard. Not the worst pickup, and in fact, you currently have the slucky shrunken head, which is good too. Hmm. You're much more likely to overcast, you know what? And you're less likely to be in battle, so I think we'll get you the trickster shard, and then we'll switch the lucky shrunken head to you. Power stone can't go on anybody right now, but we'll find somebody to hold it later. All right. Uh, we can build the squig nest here. Upkeep production faction-wide for squigs. Nice. But I guess for now we will build nothing. Don't collect the income. All right. We have one more turn remaining of materials at sea, so build what we can. I guess it'll be these two boss poles. And then Muddy Point. We have the... Ugh, we have the stupid boss shack. Do we build it? It's so cheap. All right, fine, build it for now, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> uh, too bad this is tier 3, but it's so cheap that it uh, doesn't matter, and I guess either way we'll be building a raiding stashes here, which we won't yet. All right, ignore it then. Diplomacy, just to double check if there's anything interesting, and not yet. Hmm. If only Malice was holding Surewield Forest and allow him to live, but alas... All right, Grimgore. Let's skip the rest and end the turn. And wait, I forgot about something. Yo, build Grimgore a giant. Please don't tell me it's four turns. Oh, huh? It doesn't give us the capacity for giants. It just unlocks. Oh, it should give us at least one capacity for giants. Game. Why you do this? All righty. Well, and that's a shame. And I think we want to keep the money as it is, so we're going to march you over to Grimgor and meet him near at Nagranath. Does he have two territories or one? Is this a settlement here or no? He has two. All right, so there is a settlement there. And is Nagranath a port? Because I see two islands near it. Man, lots of islands around the island. Many islands. Many, many islands. Hopefully we'll get something nice out of them as well. I'm not going to bank in another materials at sea, but it was quite nice nonetheless. And I won't be, and it won't be soon forgotten. And we do still have quite a bit of a nest egg built up, but we are getting to tier 4 with a couple of settlements, so we'll certainly uh, uh, get those going. And hello, the big Yumi's trophy. Oh, right. And uh, we need to build that reputation up again. Leadership reduction, etc., etc. But I'm sure we'll bump it up reasonably quickly. All right, well Grimgore. Well done, my lord. You have successfully completed your war and claimed your trophy. Not only do rival war bosses gaze upon it with envy, but it will also boost the tribe until you claim your next trophy. Yeah, 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 we'll work on the next trophy in the fullness of time. You two, way together, can you reach him? No, just barely, but no. It's all right. Transfer those biggins in a few. And transfer back the gobos and... I guess trade out these guys, although... Mm, the cat might still be useful. We shall see. All right, what do we have here? Lost Road. No, I'm not upgrading the stupid boss's shag, especially not at the uh, current cost. How's the public order? Minus one, minus one, minus five. It's not horrific, but it ain't great. We'll definitely need to do the quest next episode. One of the quests. Do we already have the Bloodforged Armor quest up? Yeah, we do, don't we? All right, well, we'll do Gitsnik first for the growth. And the recruitment cost reduction, if we end up recruiting something with Grimgore. End the turn. Let's see if we can't get one more fight at Nagranath this episode, although we are already rapidly running out of time. Now, that was foolish. You're about to get auto-resolved to death, because I don't imagine there's much in the way of defenses at Ark Ness. But I guess we'll see. Ooh, and this time we'll actually get to level up, unlike the fight against Malice's Force. It would be really nice if we could catch Uenbo's main stack if he tries to go after the lizards as well. Ah, eh, lizards are starting to like us, despite the... Oh, no, they're not, I lied. Who's starting to like us, then? 
No one. No one is starting to like us. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, I got excited. Uh, you cannot reach Nagranath. Can you reach Ocanus and the Stancius? Indeed you can, sir. And what do we have here? Meh. What do we have in terms of defenses? Oh, the defenses are quite nice. So maybe worth a little bit of a fight. I like to see that. Alrighty, and I see there's a Black Ark Admiral out there. You, sir, are going into, I guess, Wabigans as well. And you're going to transfer Grimgore some stuff. Alright, four orc biggins, replace Gabos and two of the irregular orcs. What about the forest goblin spider riders? I was going to put them in here to replace these guys, but now that they're in here, I kind of feel like maybe we shouldn't replace them, you know? Hmm. We do need the pile of orc boys. Yeah, I guess we'll keep them in this army for now. Well, this isn't going to be the spider army, but there is a spider army in our near future. All right. What do we have here? Grimgore. Do we start making you a stronger fighter? Get you dead hard. We get you bellower, missile resistance. Eh. I guess we have to ask what other things are going to be in your army other than a massive pile of black works. Possibly some orc boar boy biggins, though I wonder if we'd bother. And would it be the savage ones or the regular ones? The savage ones have the massive physical resistance and the frenzy, but they lack melee defense. Now, I think if there's anything that's going to be interspersed with the black orcs, it'll be some kind of giant unit. Some sav a couple of savage rogue idols, maybe a couple of savage giants. Maybe an Arachnorok or something, so it'll probably be the big lads that we get. But since we won't have any of that right now, it's not super useful. Let's get vitamin shrooms. Just max out Grimgore's main uh, unique tree, I guess. Smash him faster, yes, that'll help. No, no, not that kind of sna smash slanish. Uh, River Troll Hag, replenish troops, max it out. Oh, I didn't level you last time. Whoops. Uh, let's get teach him right to get the additional leadership. I do like the extra hit points and the fire resistance will counteract the reduction in fire resistance from your troll regeneration. We'll get your soul blight because it's a lovely debuff and that's all we got. All right. And you have hard to hit here. I would like to get you a little bit more defensive. Once again, the troll hugs because of their regeneration are quite nice anchoring points in a line. I get you scavenge, sir, and I guess Lusu. But you're not easily killed. I don't really care about Vanguard deployment for you, to be perfectly frank. So let's just get you Gutter Fighter and then Slippery and then try to get into They Needs Stabbing. All the names for all the orc stuff are just fantastic. Uh, Drippin' Tips replaces Scarsnick's Death Juice. All right, yeah, I get Drippin' Tips. Laneshi Giggle. And, <laughs> and let's see what else we have. Buffs for Gabos. I am still thinking you're not actually going to lead a Gabo army, though you're racking up some XP, so I think not. Let's get your Blade Master for now. You have to come up with somebody with a better defensive trait, because all you really get is uh, overzealous defense. Enabled if hit points greater than 75%. I mean, it's not horrible. We'll see, but either way, it's fighting time. Close victory, not Pyrrhic now. And there was a Pyrrhic. Well, I guess I don't remember what it was. There will be Blackheart support. So we will have to watch out for that. There is a Blackheart guard of Nagarond unit in here. But at least no malice to deal with. And oh, damn, three Doomfire Warlocks to be cast in their spells as well. Let's get to it. Man, is it me, or is Grimgore not saying anything at the start of these battles? Maybe he's just doing it really, really quietly. I'm not entirely sure. Have you guys been hearing him speak? I actually really like Grimgore's voice, like when you do diplomacy with him. It's uh, it's quite menacing. Uh, his and Deathmaster Snitch's voices are particularly nice. But anyway, anyway, looks like we have another very solid pile of Dark Elves to deal with. They have deployed once again in that weird little column formation that's been uh, sort of going around uh, lately ever since the last few patches. I really wonder what in the... Uh, 
uh, in the patches made them start doing this. I don't imagine that this has to do with the old world, as I can't imagine that it modified the AI's behavior, right? It was probably something with one of the recent patches. But anyway, they said that they would continue doing hotfixes, and I imagine, or at least I hope, that they touch on this weird thing at some point. Anyway, Black Ark support coming down, and we do have to be real careful about that for this reason. Black Ark support hits the Black Orcs, knocking about a third of their HP off, which is, uh, well, it's certainly more than I'd like. Fortunately, though, we do have that regeneration on our troops, and the Black Orcs not having lost uh, more than one unit, and due to that banner of theirs, and we'll be just fine and hopefully able to recover. Anyway, we're going to speed this up as our army moves forward, and here we go. The Black Orc Big Boss will lead the way towards the Dark Riders, who uh, don't really react at first. And, ah, oh, a little spider riding Gabo. That's cute. Is there a little, uh, yeah, there's a little dagger tied to the... Uh, or is that a dagger, or is that just like a bunch of feathers? No, I think it's just a bunch of feathers. I thought it was a dagger tied to the uh, tip of one of the uh, uh, spider's legs there. But the feathers work for decoration as well. Anyway, here we go. The heroes will uh, lead the way, and the Black Orcs will quickly follow to try to overwhelm uh, the enemy Dark Riders and Doomfire Warlocks, essentially anything and everything uh, that is within reach. We are going to move the rest of our infantry essentially around uh, this blob that the enemy is uh, blocking us with to try to engage the enemy range units and continue working our way through the, uh, the piles of enemies. If they had artillery or something along those lines, this formation might actually work reasonably well, as it would force us to uh, uh, sort of slowly make our way forward, all the while being pummeled by artillery. Unfortunately, this is not the case. Alright, nice uh, gaze of Mork coming in. It does hit the enemy Supreme Sorceress and does a little bit of damage, but uh, did seem to actually deprive a fair few of the amount of enemy units of HP. The Orc Shaman has already dealt 14k damage, and he hasn't used much in the way of spells, after all. Alrighty, continuing to make our way forward, those harpies coming down and hitting us from several directions, but here comes uh, the foot of Gork, or possibly Mork and hopefully that will have done plenty of damage. Let's see, in fact, we have our Orc Shaman up at 60 kills, and if I can just... 45k damage, and not too bad. Alrighty, and it looks like the enemy is starting to separate us a little bit. Maybe we've gone a little bit too far with only a single unit of boys to protect our, our lords and heroes, but to be fair, they're not particularly fragile. Even our mage isn't particularly fragile, so we're still looking okay. More of our boys are moving in to envelop the enemy army and head towards all those dark shards and range units, especially from this side, whereas from this side we have the spider riders and the other range uh, cav and melee cav annoying the enemy boar boys have also moved their way in and are distracting enemy black arc corsairs the wa comes down as well and we're starting to completely surround the enemy army all right very very nice so just gotta stop the rest of the enemy range units from firing or at least kill them off if not with our own range units. We do have the reinforcements coming in, and perhaps I should have waited, but the Black Arc support abilities kind of made me nervous, and I decided to uh, and just push forward with all of our units instead. And here we go, the Black Guard of Nagaron have finally made their way forward. They've been taking some hits from our heroes, however, as well as our new biggins. Although it looks like these biggins have been pretty badly damaged by this fight. Fortunately, the balance of power is at about 80, maybe even 85% in our favor, and though the Black Guard are very much holding, uh, the rest of their army isn't really. In fact, the enemy sorceress is wavering, shades and other range units have all been caught up in the melee and can no longer fire, and we may be able to force the Black Guard of Nagaron to rout. 
before they can achieve all that much. There we go. Alrighty, they read and we didn't have to kill them all, though our heroes did arrive in the Black Orc Big Boss and the like, I'm sure. I would have knocked them around. A decisive victory for us, and I feel like perhaps the faction won't be able to recover from this. I mean, they do have that one settlement remaining, but there's no way that they build up a proper army after this, right? I shouldn't say things like that because it'll jinx it, but anyway. Alrighty, looks like the Dark Elf extermination is proceeding well apace. We certainly did take some damage during the battle. One of our Orc Biggins unit, this one was fighting the Black Guard of Nagarod, who uh, held them off quite admirably. And I do have to give the MVP to De Immortal's unique banner. That thing is doing so much work, as the Black Orcs that are holding it are constantly getting hit by the biggest spells and stuff, acting like the tip of the spear. And then, of course, they are not losing a lot of models. So they drop down below half HP, and and the battle, but then they revive completely to full, as if they hadn't gotten hurt at all. Very, very nice. We could have reduced the casualties further by, you know, moving in the uh, pile of gobos, but, well, I was a little bit impatient, as I tend to be. Anyway, we're gonna occupy Akhness here, got ourselves another warrior bane and a pit boss. Casualty or punishment trait bonus, always nice to see. And then I guess we're heading to Nagranath to knock out Malice's faction for right, good. Right. Over the next I imagine two turns since we won't be getting there and then we'll see how we can opportunistically take out the uh, Jade Court or possibly the Lizards depending on how each of them does a thing. We're certainly not going to let them keep a gold mine so yeah. Anyway, with that we are more, yeah we're definitely out of time so I'm going to call it here. We will hopefully be taking all of Albion next time and though I do imagine we will run at least one of the to counteract the massive public order issue that we're having. So in order to do that, that may take up a fair bit of the episode as well. But anyway, more fun orky stuff to come, so stay tuned. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. Thanks for watching.